ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ಸ್ಗೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ನನ್ನ ಹೆಸರು ನಿಮಿಲ ಸೊ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಪಿ ಯು ಸಿನ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆದಂಥ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎನ್ವಿರಾನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ನ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸನ್ನು ನೋಡ್ತಾ ಹೋಗೋಣ ಸೊ ಫಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಎಕಾಲಜಿ ಸೊ ಎಕಾಲಜಿ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಒನ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಲ್ ಡೀಲ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಇಂಟರಾಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಎನ್ವಿರಾನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂದರೆ ದೇರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಬಿಟ್ಸ್ ನಾವು ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಅಡಾಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ದ ಎನ್ವಿರಾನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದರ್ ಸರ್ವೈವಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಿಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಸೊ ರಿಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಪೀಷೀಸ್ ನಾವು ರೊಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಅರ್ತ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಕ್ಸಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಚೇಂಜಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಎನ್ವಿರಾನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಲೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸೀಸನ್ಸ್ ನಾವು ದಿಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಲೀಡ್ ಟು ದ ಫಾರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಬಯೋಮ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಡೆಸರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಗ್ರಾಸ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಫೇವರೇಬಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಬಿಟ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇನ್ ಹಾರ್ಶ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ ಎನ್ವಿರಾನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ನಾವು ದ ಎನ್ವಿರಾನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅನ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಡಿವೈಡೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಎ ಬಯೋಟಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಯೋಟಿಕ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಎ ಬಯೋಟಿಕ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೇಜರ್ ಎ ಬಯೋಟಿಕ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಲ್ ಇಂಟರಾಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ದ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ರಿಲೆವೆಂಟ್ ಎ ಬಯೋಟಿಕ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ ಅನ್ ಆಪ್ಟಿಮಮ್ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದರ್ ಮೆಟಬಾಲಿಸಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಬಾಡಿಲಿ ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಈಗ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ ತುಂಬ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಆದರೂ ವಿ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಬೇರ್ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೂ ಕೋಲ್ಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಬೇರ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಮಾಡ್ರೇಟ್ ನಾವು ಡಿಪೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದರ್ ಎಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಟು ಟಾಲ್ರೇಟ್ ದ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ ರೇಂಜ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೂ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇನೋಥರ್ಮಲ್ ಅಂದರೆ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಅ ನ್ಯಾರೋ ರೇಂಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯೂರೋಥರ್ಮಲ್ ಸೊ ವಿಚ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಎಲಾಬರೇಟ್ ಆರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟಾಲರೇಟ್ ಅ ವೈಡ್ ರೇಂಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಸ್ಪೀಷೀಸು ಆರ್ಟಿಕ್ ಝೋನ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ಅಥವಾ ಅಂಟಾರ್ಟಿಕ್ ಝೋನ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ಸರ್ವೈವ್ ಆಗಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಬಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಸ್ಪೀಷೀಸು ಬರೀ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಸಲ್ಲೇ ಸರ್ವೈವ್ ಆಗಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಸ್ಪೀಷೀಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಯೂರೋಥರ್ಮ್ ಯೂರಿಥರ್ಮಲ್ ದೇ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸರ್ವೈವ್ ಅ ಲಿಟಲ್ ವೈಡರ್ ರೇಂಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ಸ್ ನಾವು ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಎಬಯೋಟಿಕ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ವಾಟರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅ ಮೇಜರ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೂಯೆನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆನ್ ಅರ್ತ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೈಲಿ ಇಂಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ವಿತೌಟ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದ ಮೇಜರ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಜೀವಿ ಜೀವಂತವಾಗಿ ಇರಬೇಕಂದ್ರೆ ನೀರಿನ ಅಂಶ ಇರಲೇಬೇಕು ಮೈಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಓಷನ್ಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಕ್ವಾಂಟಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅ ಲಿಮಿಟೇಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ದ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ದ ಮೇನ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ನಾವು ಡಿಪೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದ ಅವೈಲ ಅವೈಲಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಟಾಲರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸೆಲಿನಿಟಿ ದ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಸ್ಟೇನೋ ಹ್ಯಾಲಿನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಅ ನ್ಯಾರೋ ರೇಂಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಲಿನಿಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯೂರೋ ಹ್ಯಾಲಿನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಲ್ ಟಾಲರೇಟ್ ಅ ವೈಡರ್ ರೇಂಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಲಿನಿಟಿ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಫಾ ಸಾಯಿಲ್ ವೇರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಂಪೋಸಿಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಾಯಿಲ್ ವಿಲ್ ಡಿಫರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಟು ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದ ಕ್ಲೈಮೇಟ್ ವೆದರಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸ್ ವೆದರಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಾಯಿಲ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ಸ್ ನಾವು ದ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರೈಸ್ ಫೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಸಾ
energetically more expensive. Now migrate. So certain species are going to migrate. Organisms can move temporarily from a stressful habitat for more hospitable areas and they return once the period is going to change. So for example birds, they will migrate from cold regions to relatively warmer regions during winter and vice versa during summers. And suspension, so suspend. Some organisms will cease their metabolic activity during a stressful period. They will suspend all the activities and enter a period called dormancy wherein they will be alive but inactive. For example spores in bacteria and lower plants and hibernation which is winter sleep and estivation the summer sleep in some animals. Similarly zooplanktons will enter diapause a stage wherein suspended development during unfavorable conditions. Now adaptations. So these are certain characteristics which organisms will develop in order to survive and reproduce in a better habitat. I mean in the habitat where they are surviving. Now these adaptations can be physiological, behavioral or even morphological. Now desert plants. So they have thick cuticle on their leaf surface and stomata which is arranged in deep pits to reduce water loss. Now the special photosynthetic pathways CAM will enable their stomata to remain closed during daytime. Now their leaves are reduced to the spines and photosynthesis is carried out by flattened stems. Now animals of colder regions, so they have shorter limbs and ears to minimize the heat loss wherein Allen's rule and the body is covered by thick fur to reduce the heat loss and their body has a thick layer of fat which is the blubber below their skin to act as insulator to minimize the heat loss. Now animals in colder regions like these polar bears and all will have a thick fur wherein it will have fat under the uh, fur and this is going to protect these species from colder environments and people living in high altitudes will have RBC productions and increased breathing rates. Now some desert animals are capable of burrowing in order to escape the heat. In addition some desert animals like kangaroo, kangaroo rat are able to meet their water requirement through internal fat oxidation. Now they also will have the ability to concentrate their urine also. Now population, so this is a group of similar individuals living in a geographical area wherein they share similar resources and they are capable of interbreeding with each other and animals of certain attributors which individuals do not possess are birth rate per capita births and death rate per capita deaths. Birth rate per capita birth and death rate per capita death and sex ratio wherein ratio of number of males to females in a population. Age distribution. A population can be composed of individuals of different age groups. So age distribution will plot a given population and is given by a pyramid. Now structure of age pyramid will de determine the growth status of the population whether it is growing, it is stable or if it is declining like this. So this is a pre-reproductive phase, reproductive uh, population and post-reproductive population. So this is the stable condition of it and this is the declining condition of it. Now population size more technically is referred to as population density which is capital N which is referred as capital N and this will indicate the number of individuals which are inhabiting a particular niche. Now if the population is huge then relatively the density is measured instead of absolute density whose measurement is time consuming. Now population growth, so the size of population in which it's ever changing aspect since it depends upon the availability of food, predation, weather conditions etc. And this will give us an idea whether certain population is growing or declining. Now some reasons for increase or decrease in pop uh, populations is natality which is number of births during a given period in the given population, mortality which is the death rate a number of deaths during a given period in the population. Immigration, so I which is the number of individuals of same species who have come into the habitat from elsewhere during a given period and emigration is the number of individuals of same species who have left the habitat and gone elsewhere during a given period. 
Now, if n is a population at time t, then its density which is t plus 1 will be n t plus 1 which is n t plus birth rate into i minus death rate into emigration, birth and immigration, death and emigration. Okay. Now, growth models which is the exponential growth. So, exponential growth when the resources are unlimited, population will tend to grow in an exponential pattern. So, if population size is n and the birth and death rates which is not per capita are b and d respectively, then increase or decrease in the n and t which is time period is given by dn by dt is equals to b minus d into n. If b minus d is equals to r, then dn by dt is rn, wherein r is the intrinsic rate of natural increase or nt is equals to n naught ERT, where nt is the population density at time t. Now, n naught is population density at time 0, sorry, time O. Now, r is intrinsic rate of natural increase and e is base of natural logarithms, which is 2.71828. Now, logistic growth. So, what is this? When resources are limited, wherein it leads to a competition between individuals for the survival of the fittest, the population will tend to grow in a logistic manner. That is, in this kind of growth, there is an initial lag phase followed by acceleration or deceleration phase and finally, the asymptote when it reaches the carrying capacity k. So, when n in relation to the t is plotted, it will result in a sigmoid curve called the Virchow's per logistic growth, which is given by dn by dt, that is rn of k minus n by k, wherein n is the population density at time and r is the intrinsic rate of natural increase as usual and k is the carrying capacity. So, this is the sigmoid curve. Now, life history variations. So, populations will tend to increase their reproductive fitness in order to survive the better. So, this is known as Darwinian fitness or higher R value. So, some trends which follow in course of achieving this um, uh, variations are they will breed only once in their lifetime. Example, salmon and bamboo and some will breed many a times like the birds, mammals and some will produce large number of small sized offsprings like the oysters and some will produce small number of large sized offsprings like the birds and mammals. Now, population interactions. So, a natural habitat which consists of many organisms living together and these organisms will communicate and interact with each other. For example, plants will depend on the insects for pollination. Now, interspecific interactions are those interactions between two indifferent species of organisms and they can be either beneficial or harmful to one or both of the partners. Now, interspecific interactions which is the predation, it is beneficial to the predator while the prey is harmed and it will act as means of transfer of energy to the next higher tropic level and it will end maintaining the balance of the ecosystem. Now, for plants, herbivores are predators and some plants will produce secondary metabolites, thorns and poisonous chemicals to ward off the predators. Now, similarly, animals also will camouflage themselves to protect themselves from the predators and some preys are poisonous and they are distasteful and then monarch butterfly which is highly distasteful because of a special chemical which will it will acquire at its caterpillar stage by feeding on the poisonous weeds so as to avoid the predators. Now, coming to competition, so this will occur only in closely related species wherein they share the same type of habitat and food resources. However, for competition to take place resources need not be always scarce and competition does not necessarily take place between the same species. Now, in competition, the fitness of one species is significantly lower in the presence of another species and survival of the fit fittest is ultimately taken place. Now, Goya's competitive exclusion principle which will state that two closely related species competing for same resource will not coexist identifiably, sorry, indefinitely and the competitively inferior will get eliminated eventually. 
Now moreover some species will develop mechanisms to facilitate their coexistence. So to coexist with each other they will facilitate themselves. So parasitism, so in this interaction one of the partner is benefited because it will reside outside or inside the host body and it will get the free accommodation and food while host is affected because of the loss of nutrients. Now parasites in nature have developed a wide variety of adaptations like the hooks, suckers for attachment, loss of digestive system, high reproducing capacity etc. Now parasites can live either outside which is ectoparasites or inside as endoparasites in the body of host organisms. Now brood parasitism, parasitism, it is seen in birds in which the parasitic bird will lay its eggs in the nest of unassuming host bird which takes care of them until they hatch. For example, quail will lay its eggs in the nest of a crow. Now commensalism, so this is an interaction wherein one of the partners is benefited while the other is neither benefited nor harmed. For example, orchid which grows on an epiophyte on the mango tree. So the orchid get the support while the mango is unaffected. Now mutualism or symbiosis. So in this interaction both partners are benefited. For example, lichens will interact with algae and fungi where both are benefited. The fungi will give support to the algae while algae will prepare the food for the fungi. Thank you.